Reed Almond is with us. So here's, you know, there's no matter how bad times are, there are people who do good in bad times. And I'm guessing your business is pretty good in bad times, right? Uh, typically, you would think so, even though, you know, since uh, the pandemic and everything started in March, uh, my bankruptcy filings have been down, and so have bankruptcy filings uh, nationwide. Okay. Why do you suppose that is? That seems to go counter what you would think would be going on. Well, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the government's proposals to give the extra unemployment benefits, to do the uh, foreclosures uh, stalled out by doing the uh, forbearance agreements, moratorium on evictions. Um, a lot of creditors are willing to work with consumers. So a lot of the things that drive and lead to one filing for bankruptcy, a lot of those have kind of been put on the back burner. Now, do you do all personal, or do you also work on corporate bankruptcies? I mainly do consumer personal bankruptcies as well as some small business owners. I don't do a lot of the very large corporate filings. Are you seeing an increase, though, in small businesses? You know, we certainly have heard, heard and seen that a lot of, you know, mom-and-pop restaurant owners are having a difficult time. You know, it seems like every day I hear a story of another, you know, Houston area favorite. I'm sure the same thing's going on in Dallas. Uh, a, a restaurant that's been in business for 50, 60, 70 plus years, family owned and operated, has had to permanently shut down. They just can't can't make it work with the COVID restrictions. Uh, bring us up to date on that. Are you seeing uh, more of an increase when it comes to that? Yes, absolutely. I'm hearing from a lot of small business owners who are letting me know that you know they're they're struggling that the, uh, the little bit of help they did get from the PPP program uh, has run out and that with the renewed restrictions um, and mandates on capacity, that they're having a lot, of, a lot of difficulty making their numbers and staying profitable. Yeah, you know, there are people who think that maybe as it relates to, certainly in the restaurant business, I don't know about small business in general, but in the restaurant business that we could lose at least half of our restaurants before this is over and done with. You know, it's really te- terrible, and you see the um, you see the signs, you know, going up. I know that I do appear where place after place it looks like it's closing down, and the ripple effects that that sends throughout the economy for the employees, for the vendors. Um, we haven't really even begun to to feel the repercussions um, that all these closures are going to have, much less the inconvenience and and the sadness by the consumers who enjoyed you know doing business with those establishments. Yeah. When do you think we'll kind of hit that ground running, if you will, when we get to the point where we're starting to see many more of those bankruptcy cases starting up? Typically, what's the lag time between somebody running into financial trouble and then making a decision to file for bankruptcy? You know, typically, believe it or not, once the economy starts to get back on an upward trajectory where things kind of start to stabilize, People will kind of survey the territory and they'll be like, okay, you know, I really have these, these debts. I have this, uh, this issue I need to recover from and the economy is turning back around. I, I really want to do something about my debt. And so usually when the upswing starts is when we typically see an upstart in our business as well. Um, so I think as soon as, you know, we can get a lot of this virus behind us and start reopening the economy fully, uh, we'll start to, you know, start the path to getting back where we were. Seems ironic, doesn't it? So what you're saying is is that when, once things start to get better, that's when they really start to get worse, <laughs> at least for a lot of people. <laughs> we know a lot of people are in crisis management right now. You know, they're, they're worried about, you know, putting food on the table. They're worried about their housing. Um, when evictions start back up, I think that we're going to see a spike in bankruptcy filings. I think I read something where there's 2.5 million people who are behind on their rent in July. And, you know, the, the, the CARES Act uh, moratorium for evictions expired in July, so they got the 30-day notice, which we could start seeing those evictions coming out, you know, uh, this month at the end of August. What kind of uh, – do, do you have a – I know it's kind of early in the game on all this, Reed, but do you have a feel for what kind of trickle-down we're likely to have on this because or trickle up as the case may be people are not paying rent they're not paying rent to a landlord people are not making a house payment not making a house payment to a bank so at some point in time we're going to probably have a lot of apartments that are owed money on a lot of houses that are owed money on what happens in those cases 
I think we're going to start seeing a lot of those businesses in the headlines as well, you know, seeking bankruptcy protection and, and, and closing. Um, I mean, if you take the retail, I mean, everybody knows all the retail stores that are closing. You know, when, when a big uh, anchor store like JCPenney or something pulls out from a mall, a lot of the other smaller tenants are able to get out of their leases as well. So we're going to have all the landlords and all these this open space available in our malls. Um, the commercial uh, leasing spaces, you know, a lot of people are, are have their staff working from home or they're not able to reopen. So a lot of those places are going empty and delinquent. So those effects we're going to continue to see, I think, for for many, many months, if not years from now. Wow. Okay. Hey, before we let you go, I, I want to get I want to find out what motivates you to do what you do, because I saw a little something on on your bio on your website. You, that you kind of grew up with with parents who had some financial issues, and that had a huge influence over your becoming a bankruptcy attorney. How did that work? Yeah, when I was younger, my parents got divorced, and so my mother was the primary uh, breadwinner. She was a school teacher, and so uh, my sister and my mom and myself, we weren't able to really afford our house. Uh, there was one point in time when our vehicle was repossessed. We had to move into an apartment, and I remember at an early age, um, having those worries about finances and wonder what we're going to do, uh, which was a big motivating factor for me um, to try to go to college and be successful and be the first one in my family to go to college. And I, when I see clients in situations, I, there's no judgment that I have because I mean, this person could be a family member. This could be my mother going through this situation. And I know that bad things happen to good people all the time that they had no they weren't planning for a pandemic to happen. They weren't planning to get laid off or get a divorce. And when these things happen, they need somebody who, who's compassionate, who can help walk them through the steps and make sure they can make an informed decision about their finances. That's interesting. That's, yeah, it's funny, you know, how uh, your, your, um, the things that happened to you as a kid, they never go away, do they? They stick with you the rest of your life. It, it, some people find negative ways to react to it other people find positive ways to do it It sounds like you found a pretty positive way to kind of react to a little bit of a tough upbringing no i really truly feel like i'm blessed and in a wonderful position i love what i do you know getting to see people every day who are really and sometimes in very desperate situations who don't know of any options and when able to share with them a way out a way to rebuild and sometimes be in a better position shortly after um, our help um, it's so rewarding to be able to see those people and, and help them out. Well, you helped us out today, and we appreciate that. Thanks, Reed. Appreciate you joining us today. Take care. All right. Thank you. Yep. Dallas-based bankruptcy attorney, that's Reed Almond.